GameSpot <laughs> viewers, welcome. I'm Kevin Van Ord, but you're not here to see me. You're here to see Shadowrun Returns, and you're here to talk and uh, meet the dudes from <laughs> Hairbrain Schemes. Guys, why don't you go ahead, introduce yourselves, talk about what it is that you do at Hairbrain Schemes, and what it is you do for Ooh, Shadowrun. I clean toilets, Jordan. I make trouble, um, uh, and then I clean it up. And then Mitch cleans it up. Well, actually, uh, that's really accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, there's the entire relationship. Uh, yeah, in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. So you're Jordan Weissman. Oh, I'm sorry, the Jordan Weissman. Question, uh, I make games and worlds, and and one day my mom hopes I have a real job. Yeah, and, and uh, I'm Mitch Gittleman, and I work with Jordan and sort of produce games and help design games and play games and say let's do it better, faster, and different. And uh, my mom has no idea still what I do. Okay. That's, uh, that's better than I could have done. See, that's why I had you do it yourself. <laughs> uh, no, I appreciate it. The opportunity. Now, obviously, you're here to show Shadowrun Returns, a game lots of people are interested in. And why do you, why do you suppose that is? Well, um, uh, because at some point in a previous life, we must have done something right, uh, I yeah. guess. Um, <laughs> and then horribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah, so we, like... that, that's future history. Let's move on. I, I mean, I, I think... Um, it was really overwhelming when we did the Kickstarter uh, just about 10 months ago because, uh, you know, when you make things up for a living, um, you tend to live in your own head a lot and you don't sometimes realize the impact that what you've, uh, what you've had as, as created has had on other people. And, and the yeah. Kickstarter was a, was a big wake-up call in that regard because this game is, um, is really proved to be pretty important, this game universe yeah. and, the, and the game to, uh, to a lot of people, which is enormously touching. To us, and uh, and became an enormous responsibility for us to uh, to not only do something which which I had a very personal connection to and wanted to do right by it, but it was really clear that we had an obligation to the fans um, to kind of live up, the, well, almost impossibly live up to their childhood <laughs> expectations of of what this was to them. Yeah, um, I felt the expectations the pretty hardcore. You know, having completely failed at it before, I thought it, it was a wise course of action to correct that, and so, yeah, I've been kind of canon police, which is yeah. kind of funny, but, considering you know, the, my the, previous role. The game, um, you know, started as a paper RPG 24 years ago, and then went on to be a, an SNES and Sega Genesis RPG in the 90s, uh, and, and it's continued to be, you know, hundreds of, of uh, books that have been published in the, in the 24 years subsequently. There's uh, board game, there's, of course, uh, yeah, besides the novels, there's also the doll game you made. It's not a doll game. It was an action figure game. It's, it's when it's this big. It's a, it's a dolly. No, unless yes. it, if it's not fuzzy <laughs> and soft, it's not a doll. It's an action figure. Okay, get it, get it straight. We should um, make Shadowrun plushies. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so it's been it's just been overwhelmingly uh, exciting to be able to have the opportunity given to us by the fans to uh, to really do it in the electronic form the way. Uh, I've always wanted to, and to empower the fans to be able, and and the players to be able to create their own stories uh, the way they always could in the paper po paper uh, games vision. Well, the version. other thing is that we're creating this There's game. A besides with live TV, I can't be edited. That's that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, but luckily you can while we're making the game. You know that feature <laughs> will cost ten million dollars. But the other thing is that making this game. You know, with Kickstarter backing as opposed to publisher backing, has been intensely cool, and making a game in the age of social media where people are seeing the game being made instead of coming out when the game is made and saying here here's our uh, creation absolutely. what do you think it's more yeah. like hey uh we're making the, I mean, when we did the kickstarter we had uh, one really great piece of paper <laughs> yeah no we really did start with the with just the vision um and it was short and it was simple um and it's really been uh it's been like you know, kind of a high wire act on a glass in a glass house, which has been enormously exciting, um, and and a huge benefit to the development as we've been getting constant feedback uh, from people uh, all the way through. Uh, it it really is a fascinating uh, and very enjoyable experience. Yeah, and so. absolutely nerve wracking. Yeah. But you probably want to see it, so. Yeah, oh, should we show them the game? Should we do I, I don't know, this is perfectly entertaining for me. I can just have you guys come and talk. <laughs> oh, just day. watch it. I'm going to have some I'd coffee. Go ahead, do what you want. But uh, oh, obviously people Seattle, want to see the game. Now, a successful yeah. Kickstarter. Um, there's also, you, you're now, um, you've got a pre-order thing going on now, too. Which Ooh, is if yeah. you go to Hairbrained, it's hairbrained-schemes.com. That's right. Slash Twitch. Right. Um, you can go and, and pre-order, and there's a basic game, there's a deluxe edition. So basic is 20 bucks, right? Uh, well, uh, well it's be, 15 uh, for pre-order. 15, 15 for pre-order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the full cost for the basic game is going to retail for $20. That's right. right, and that includes yeah. our mission editor, or our Shadowrun editor. Yeah. Hurrah. Yeah. And yeah. deluxe edition is 35 bucks. Yeah, that's all. Uh, so pre-order and save 5 bucks. Version. 
That's pre right. right. Pre-order pre that one, five save bucks. five bucks. And, uh, and, you know, uh, and both our mothers will thank you. And yeah, well, us, wait. Us too. We'd like to tell you about a very special offer we have for you right now, and that's our collector's edition at $75. This brought oh. to you from Hallmark. <laughs> yes. Thank you for that very special um, public service announcement. That comes with good karma. So. <laughs> and and other fun tchotchkes like the USB. Like our first USB. DLC pack, which is Berlin. And the USB dog tags, which are cool. Yeah. And our, uh, uh, what do they call that thing again? The soundtrack. Soundtrack. Which mm. is good. Noise. And I bet there's one other thing that somebody back at Hairbrain Schemes is yelling, Mitch, don't forget to mention this. Don't you All have right. the web up or something? Shouldn't I, we know I do this have, stuff? I do have a web connection. Um, oh, gosh. What else is, what else? I can, I can throw in. You You go ahead and you start right. playing. Let's make clickies. And I'll, uh, I'll look and see what's right. here. Uh, downloadable PDF of Shadowrun Returns Anthology. Ah, ah that? ha -ha. Uh, that's, that's right. it. There's all this cool fiction that Wait, we Wait, let's tell them real fast about the Shadowrun oh, yeah. Returns Anthology, because oh. I think it's a really cool idea. And Jordan will tell you about it right now. Jordan? Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Shadowrun has always been about stories. I mean, ultimately, that's it's it's a it's uh, a, a universe that we love telling stories in, and that's what we want to do here in, on multiple levels. So obviously, the core game is about us telling a story. Um, the the core idea of releasing the editor as part of the PC. Uh, and Mac product is so that you can tell your own stories. Um, but then we also, there's been great Shadowrun authors who have contributed to the universe over the years, and we wanted to get them involved in telling stories connected to the game. So using the mainline plot of the game as kind of the, uh, the, the main hub of this braided anthology, um, we've uh, brought in a whole bunch of authors from, uh, that have contributed to Shadowrun over the years, and, mm -hmm. and some new guys too, and, uh, and it's just been a, a ton of fun uh, watching um, them spin off of uh, and, and add to uh, the, uh, the richness of the world. So yeah, one of the cool really things cool. that, uh, obviously some of the people that are contributing are very old friends of ours, but one of the people that's contributing, I, forgive me, I've forgotten your name, but she she, uh, she follows us on Twitter, and she was one of the testers for the Sega Genesis game. Yeah. So she's writing for our game, yeah. and oh, she's wow. tested for that. I think that's badass. Yeah, that's I love the history of Shadowrun. It's so cool. And, and that book is also going to be uh, the art book. So we're going to take a lot of the uh, concept art and production art from, uh, from the game and, uh, and include it there as well, which is really exciting because the, the team has just done amazing, amazing stuff, which, which we'll show you more of now. Maybe you should do the clicky-clicky. We'll, we'll do the clicky-clicky. So this is um, uh, an alpha build of the game. Uh, and uh, it's set. The, the game is set in uh, Seattle, 2054. Um, Shadowrun is a uh, is kind of a, a mashup of science fiction and fantasy, where uh, we have kind of the dystopia of a uh, a Blade Runner cyberpunk environment uh, that's that's you know merged with uh, the creatures of um, uh, of mythology. So uh, and the return of magic to the world, like the Lord of the Rings. Um, yes, only with guns. Yeah, that is. Um, yeah. something anyway, like that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, not really. Anyway, so uh, so we'll kind of walk through. It is a uh, it's a, what we call a tactical RPG. We're starting here in in what we call free movement mode, uh, so that uh, the, you know the character you can just click around and and move. I'm gonna zoom out the camera a little bit so we can see a little bit more of the town. Uh, oh, soy dogs! That sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. dying for one right now. Um, so we can see this kind of bubble over of her head. That means that uh, that she wants to talk. I'll zoom out a little bit because it's just we got to get you to know that we're here in in uh, Pike Place Market. Uh, if you know Seattle, you know Pike Place. Yeah. By the way, on that free move mode, if you had any NPC runners that you had hired uh, that were with you on the street here in free mo move mode, they would sort of follow around you automatically. You don't have to uh, click around for them while yeah, you're just doing your investigation. Duckling behind you, which is really yeah. nice. Um, all right, so uh, we, we've got in, into our first conversation with the street vendor. Um, we should back up. What are we here for? This is not the mainline plot of the game. No. Uh, we didn't want to kind of uh, do a spoiler uh, for that. So instead, this is one of the side missions that you could take in the game. Uh, and in this in this case, the character that I've been driving around here uh, is named Lady Z, a character I've created um, for uh, to, to be kind of one of my runners. Uh, in uh, our campaign, you can create any character you want. Um, you can do any of the... Uh, the metahuman races, so you know, uh, human, uh, dwarf, orc, troll, elf, um, and uh, wh whichever of the two sexes, both of them, um, you want to be, and then, yes, both, <laughs> both types, yeah. uh, uh, and then. Um, you can start as any of the archetypes um, that uh, that we have in the game. Right, the Shadowrun's a classless system, so you start with a character archetype: a street samurai, a decker, a rigger, a shaman. Uh, 
physical adept. Am I missing anything? I wasn't paying attention. What were you doing? <laughs> One of those. Reading the uh, Yeah, text. reading the thing. Anyway, yeah. so you start with those, and that'll get you on sort of a career path, but then, you know, based on the skills you choose, you can go branch off in any direction. You're only limited by your, your essence, which is sort of your life force, and the more cyber technology you put on yourself, the less of your, the lower your essence goes. How do yeah, I do with that? That was good, yeah, because I mean, basically one of the premises of the universe is, is that magic and technology are kind of at odds with each other. Right. Um, and uh, and so you, you, you know, you have to find that balance in your body. Um, so Lady Z on the side mission um, has been hired to uh, investigate and find the location of a secret lab um, that a corporation uh, has planted here in the downtown area. Uh, you've been hired by a rival corporation um, and uh, your job is to find it, um, to figure out what research they're doing there and then, um, how does one say it in corporate terms, <laughs> um, uh, cancel it. Yeah, with extreme prejudice. With extreme prejudice, yeah. yeah. Which means just blow shit up. Um, so uh, in this conversation that, that Mitch has clicked through, we've been talking to her, finding uh, what's going on, anything anything new in the in the area, and she's telling us about how this uh, Lone Star, which is uh, basically private security working for a corporation, has come in and kicked these uh, uh, gang members out of um, what their uh, their hidey hole was, uh, which was a, an old abandoned laboratory that they hadn't uh, been setting up, kind of the uh, equivalent, the future equivalent of like a meth lab in. Um, <laughs> That's true and, story. Uh, and so. That seems like a good suspect to us, so we want to go talk to uh, Jed, uh, which is um, the ganger who's still causing troubles. This dude right here. But wait, a homeless man wants to talk first. Well, he's, he's begging Jed to leave him alone. Why don't you beg Jed to leave you alone? <laughs> you, you don't want to use your acting chops? Come on, no, you can be a no, homeless man. No. You don't feel it? No, last time right. I acted high school, that was it. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> this guy seems a little pissed off. <laughs> All right, so what are we going to do here? Oh. Right, we want to kill this guy. Yeah. I mean, oh, well, one thing you can, yeah. well, you don't have to. Right. So, I mean, the, the conversation, um, uh, like in any RPG, right, the, the, the conversation can be really important in your gameplay. And right. one of the things we've, we've done, I think, was really innovative. Uh, the team has, has merged the way that we do all of our kind of uh, game triggers and our conversation uh, really well together so that the uh, information can flow into conversations uh, and, and decisions that come from conversations can have large impacts in game. Uh, so, on, like for instance, this part of the conversation, uh, you can see these bottom two here, like the one on the very bottom, Charisma, is, is grayed out. Uh, that is because Lady Z uh, doesn't have a very high charisma, and so she doesn't have that option to go in that path on the conversation. Uh, it, probably the gas mask, I would assume. Um, uh, <laughs> she, does a, she does have a very high strength, so she has this option, which wouldn't have been available to another character at a lower strength. And this is her attempt to intimidate, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got the top one, which is kind of just, you know, your classic smartass. Yeah. Which is typically the way you go. That is typically the yeah. way I go. Now, I want to point out, when you're, when you're making your own missions in the game, you can choose whether to have this grayed out or whether it appears at all. So you don't have to actually show that. Right. We it's a matter of whether to. you want the player to know that there was an option uh, right. to go that he didn't have uh, access to. Uh, and, and you can, um, you can um, gate those when you're making your own missions uh, on the shadow runs. You can gate those uh, conversation branches by any combination of, of effort of, of things, not just one uh, of statistic. That's it. You're toast. I like that. I'm, hey, Mikey. Where's Mikey? Here comes Mikey with a shoddy. So now we're in combat mode here. We, yeah, right. we just dropped into turn-based mode. So yeah, and, and this is something the game master can can do at any time when you're making your missions. You can drop the player from free move mode into com into turn-based mode anytime. And turn-based mode doesn't always need to be combat. It's just basically when you want the person to have the ability to more detailed interact with the world and the, and the characters yeah. around them. Um, so in this case, though, it is combat. Uh, and uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of like you know take a little cover behind uh, this really sturdy-looking rickshaw. I notice you are unarmed. <laughs> Armed. I will change that. You should um, arm. So I brought up the weapons, yeah. uh, and then I can cycle through. Um, she's got uh, a little katana she can use, um, or the shotgun, which might be more appropriate. So Your we'll range choose. is a little long. Well, screw well, it. Go. No, go ahead. No, no, Have right. fun with it. We'll go for yeah. the H and K. All right. Um, and uh, this, oh, by the way, so, so you, as you saw, you can do different weapons. You can see the damage uh, capacity and, and ranges of them. And then underneath each weapon, you can bring up different different uh, uh, special special abilities with those weapons. And these are unlocked as you gain skill. Um, so as you go up the skill trees, you get you get these unlocked, and they're by different weapon types and different um, uh, different skill types. So uh, she's going to go to uh, 
Full burst auto. fire. No, I didn't have the AP oh. for. Uh, so twenty four damage. You tasted that. He's coming up and. Kawaka. Going for a miss. We got a shotgun <laughs> fire from back there. Good time. Um, so one of the things you'll notice up here is this. This is my character, right? And it's, it's got an AP and my health bar. Um, so you have uh, two to three AP depending upon the character type. Uh, we'll uh, maybe finish off. Oh, you ended Down. him. Yeah. yeah well, so, you, know, you think he's gonna be okay? No, I don't think so. No, guys. because he faded away. Yeah. So I've got I've got one AP left. Um, this to do a burst fire takes two AP, so I can't do it. Um, so I'm gonna switch to to a single shot. Uh, and just remind Mickey, uh, Mikey, that we're here, which uh, you'll With notice. A crit. <laughs> yeah, you'll notice the damage. The damage stages up and down by the by the old um, paper game rules. So it can be anywhere from the half damage all the way up to two x damage, uh, based upon you know your skill and the body and the armor and all the other factors that were part of the original paper mm -hmm. game mode. So we're going to go over and get uh, a different angle. You'll notice that you, Mikey's over there and using cover, which is smart. Um, Oh, but right. I moved, so I can't do full yeah. auto. All right, so full auto, you have to pretty much stay stationary. There you go. So it's time Mikey left us. Um, so now that now that Mikey left us, we've now transitioned back into free move mode. See the conversation bubble come up over the old man. And it's a good time to point out, too, if you're watching on Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash GameSpot, ask questions. Yes. Um, and I'll pass on the questions oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, to yeah. Jordan and Mitch, and we can... Right. Um, we We've can already talked too much about. for our... Yes, you know, please. For us, you know, like we want questions. So ask you know. whatever you want. I'm going to ask a question, which is, which right. is, uh, so so clearly the combat's different from uh, what we might be used to from from the SNES. Yes, um, yeah, a little bit. Run. So just just a little bit. But what was the what was the thinking behind that? To be closer to the tabletop rules, to make the combat deeper than what it was in the perhaps not so deep combat of the SNES version. What was the yeah. yes thinking? and yes. Yeah, all I mean, of I think, that. All yeah, of yeah. the above. Uh, I think. Um, well, one. I think the SNES version by you know was a product of its day, and it was a great game for its day. Oh, yeah. Absolutely no question about it. Uh, but what I think one of, the, one of the things that Shadowrun always had to its magic was that uh, it was a party-based <clears throat> game, right? Uh, you needed to be able to have a really diverse range of skills because the universe had so many different things that it could throw at you, right? Um, whether it was, you know, throwing, a, you know, jacked up street samurai with incredible weapon skills mm -hmm. or a mage you know is throwing fireballs um or you know a shaman conjuring spirits uh or you know matrix security that you had to be able to go through and and in the original shadow run vision uh it's difficult um for one character to be you know at the top of all of those things at the same time um and so you that's why you ended up uh, you know having a party of diverse skills and and this is kind of you know along the lines of your standard fantasy game where you you know you have your cleric your warrior your your thief right um same thing only in our environment you know they're just spread across what we call the three realities of shadow run right the physical world the, the magical world and and uh, the matrix world uh, and so you needed to get that uh, skills against all of them and so we really wanted to model that and and be able to have that kind of that um diversity of skill and then a much richer tactical environment. Um, uh, you know, I mean, our, our kind of touchstone for that was XCOM. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, we, we all loved the kind of way you could really um, suss out the, 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 uh, the tactics of it. And yeah, XCOM was the first game that I stayed up all night and heard birds singing. You know, like, <laughs> holy crap, I gotta go to school. Oh wait, that was post-school, I'm a little older than that. But I should work. So I'm going through the conversation here. So now that the uh, the, the gang who the gang uh, member who was uh, kind of uh, beating up our our uh, homeless man, he's telling us where these guys were based and where uh, the security corps have thrown them out of, um, which uh, which of course tells us where we need to go, um, uh, and uh, and we're being pretty nice to him. And he's telling us a little bit more um, that uh, after the security guys took it over, they brought in a mage, a corporate mage, and a whole bunch of really big containers that apparently smelled bad. So that gives us some kind of tips about what uh, what kind of research might be taking place in the lab. The bad kind. So you're right wanted to point out that, of course, the, the, the corpse faded away mm -hmm. um, that we saw, and um, wanted to know about, and this is the most common question that's come up so far, is what about looting? Um, obviously, sure. the original game's economy was more based on hacking and things like that. That's where the big yeah. bucks were. But but what about the the small change? So 
Yeah, so that's um, interesting. By the way, this is a really ugly placeholder. Uh, yeah, we didn't put this in our, the video because it looks like this. Because, so, so <laughs> ignore the man behind the curtain here. This is so basically what I'm doing here on this really ugly screen. Yeah, and really stay on that screen for as long Just as, as you, you can. can. Yeah, go ahead. Hit, hit. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, anyway. Uh, uh, is I'm hiring the team. Uh, normally, any so I've done my legwork, and now I'd be going in to uh, to hire a team and go on the run. Mm -hmm. um, and so you'd get you'd have a um, a variety of of runners to choose from uh, based upon what you've accomplished so far and where you right. are in the campaign. Now the question I think a lot of people have asked us this question, so it's good. Why why are bodies fading out? Why aren't you able to ransack dead bodies? And Jordan will tell you about that right now. Are you just going to do this the whole time? Yes, you? I am. All right, fine. It's going to set I'll me up. No, no. Time. Well, so, first of all, for me, you know, oh, Shadowrun was yeah. never, is yeah. not a hack and slash game. Yeah. Right? No. Shadowrun isn't about uh, whacking somebody with a sword and then vomiting up gold coins. So it's about mission objectives, it's about intrigue, it's about story and that kind of thing. So that's one angle that we approach this from. Jordan Weissman. So, and then there's also just some <laughs> graphic reality, realities. I mean, um, the... Uh, the way our system works in movement, if we start dropping bodies every place, then you either start walking through them all the time, which looks even worse than when they yeah. fade away. Um, or you could just fill up a doorway with them. Yeah, in which case... That which is, sounds cool, because Conan used to do that, if you remember. <laughs> he just fill the doorways with bodies, and then he'd, he'd use it as a wall. But unfortunately, that means you can't complete the mission, because yeah, you can't go gets, through the doorway. So, I mean, th part of it was just kind of uh, gameplay and part of it. Now, we have heard a lot of feedback about about loot Gore? and oh, we should say loot. that there's nothing in the system that prevents the game master from creating loot when a person goes down yeah absolutely right? you can do that right now so what you do is yeah. you just leave the body be leave the one body behind that has like the data card that you need right or well, well like yeah, that. yeah you drop the data card so it yeah. becomes an object that you then you, yeah, you'll see it later that we have a there's a pickup icon that so it tells you there's something there you can right pick up. yeah you can do that so right. we can do that right now um uh, just in our campaign it's not, you know, because it wasn't central to our story, so that's not how we're doing it. It happens, but, but it's, it's not that you often. You can do it yeah. if you wish. Yeah. So, um, Oh, and gore. Somebody said, oh. what about gore? Well, that did right. come up, too. Of so course it came up. The gore. Where, what about the gore? Why is there no blood on the ground? Uh, oh, what's up with well, that? There, there, there is, is now. Yeah. There, <laughs> yeah there, we <laughs> we move very fast. <laughs> so a week ago, there wasn't blood all over the ground. There is now blood all over the ground. Right. But this build's a week old, so... Yeah. Uh, because we're 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 dumb enough to try to do you know alpha software live, but we're not dumb enough to bring last night's build live. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> but we so, talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so there is nice, there is really impressive gore on the ground. Now, now the gore fades away after a while too, but it's still it's it's pretty gory. Yeah. And uh, also there will be for you game masters out there that want to create your own uh, missions and stuff and use dead bodies as props to lay around. We got your back. Yeah, no, that definitely, and we're gonna, we and we will use those appropriately. Oh, in yeah. Our own, in Wouldn't our own be shadow run without debtors. That's, That's right. Yeah. Uh, should we move forward? To another yeah, no, question. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Let's, okay. burn. let's see something right. new because the game's been just sitting there for, for a while. while. All right, so let's make something move. So we've come, we've come in uh, inside here, and uh, we can see our that we got Lady Z, uh, a troll. I'll bring up the the. This is the beginnings of what will be kind of the information central for you, mm -hmm. um, the what we call the PDA. Uh, which nowadays I know stands for public display of affection, but 24 years ago stood for public <laughs> personal data. Um, digital assistant. Digital I'd assistant. That's I it. called it a Newton. Yes, right. I had. Remember a Newton. those? I they had did. A Newton, yeah. I knew a guy who created a holster for yeah, his Newton. My Newton got stolen at got stole at uh, Sigraph. So did it really? Yeah. That's just wrong. Yeah, it is. Anyway, um, so I have uh, kind of three tabs here in the beginning. That uh, one is the objectives tab. So this this will you know kind of be laying out what your primary objectives are. What you, what do you need to be able to successfully finish this run? Uh, and then uh, secondary objectives, uh, which are optional, would will show up and disappear as you as you uh, do them. Um, the, the, these other two tabs aren't working yet, but the notes will be kind of key fictional fictional story elements that will be um, places where they can be retained. Um, and then items would be um, things that, for instance, you've picked up on the ground, like a key card or other credentials that help you um, move through environments. Uh, down here, this will be eventually be the gear tabs. You'll be able to go out and see all the gear that's on any character. Uh, and then this is uh, the, the character tab. So we've got, you know, kind of quick synopsis of each character um, and, uh, and an overview of, as, as Mitch was talking about before, Essence. Uh, their their action points um, and all of the uh, the the attributes and the skills and then underneath skills like for instance here are um, uh, specializations. specializations and then inside of each specialization are the abilities like you saw when when we opened up uh, 
uh, the the gun before. So we go through. We got Lady Z. We've got our uh, our troll, who's a, a shaman. Um, we have a, a, a dwarf um, named Scooter, who's a, who's a rigger, um, who's really into soy calf apparently. Uh, and of course, we have uh, Jake Armitage, star of uh, the uh, SNES Shadowrun game, um, who, as I have to say, looks marvelous. Yes, he's, he's aged well. He's I aged think. well, much better than I have in the last 24 years. Um, <laughs> so uh, we will then proceed on. So with her, now you can see um, this. A little the icon here tells me uh, what how many AP I'm spending and what um, cover I'm getting. Now, actually, another thing that's in uh, build now is that the cover now shows you all four sides. Right now, it's just uh, it's just one, but in in the real game, it'll show you cover from from each angle. Uh oh. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna. <laughs> yeah. He's Do very he's... he's very forgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so that then finishes hers, her AP off, so she grays out, automatically advances to the to the next player. Now, luckily, that guy wasn't on Overwatch. We thought he was, but uh, I think I may have turned that off for you. Just in case. I didn't want to get your ass kicked so fast. But, yeah, some guys will be waiting for you. They'll be on Overwatch, so you got to really watch it. You can't just run into every room, like Jordan's about to do now, but mainly it's because we played this before, so we know it's coming. All right. Now you see, um, this is our rigger. The drone will follow behind him uh, when when the when he's not, uh, you know, in using the drone. When his, when his consciousness is not in the drone. Mm -hmm. More questions while you're here? Yeah, yeah, what absolutely. Do you yeah. Um, oh, Pantsagnost. He's. Uh, I'm. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your username uh, improperly, but there's. Uh, you know, he's he's asked a few times about like the interactivity of en en environments and mm -hmm. uh, like how frequent are hacker hotspots and. And uh, you know things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, for shamans that want to summon. Right, and right, right. Well, that's really on a run-by-run -run basis, right? So we try to have uh, something for each character archetype to do uh, regularly throughout that. Um, it, but it also depends. Some missions, you you know, won't call for a decker. You know, so you don't need a decker on that mission. Um, and there are different levels of decking. You know, sometimes it's just going to a computer and do some stuff, and other times it's like you're doing sort of the deep decker gameplay. Yeah. So, you got something to add there? Yeah, no, I, like Mitch said, it's, it's, um, uh, it is specifically placed by Game Master. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got kind of the generic, like, um, one of the reasons for that we created, for instance, uh, uh, magical fetishes that the shaman carry around is so that they can cast a spirit, uh, some, some spirits, at any time, right? Uh, and then other more powerful spirits uh, could be placed as uh, as opportunities within within the environments by the game masters. So it, it's really it is very specific. Now one of the things you know we set up here is a little example of how a level could be laid out to to use uh, drones or let the, uh, the the player gain an advantage if they're a rigger um, or have a rigger with them is this access corridor that gives them line of sight into these rooms uh, by using the drone. And that way you can plan ahead. Now you don't have to do that. But right. it gives it gives you a tactical advantage, and the the same thing holds true for the summon points. If you you know if you're out of fetishes or something, you want to use a summon point in the room, you know you don't have to. Go ahead, Jordan. I took control for a minute. Yeah, I'm not that's sure. our way. So what if I didn't want to like be be all head on? Like, let's say I wanted to be stealthy or I wanted to be tricky about this whole thing. Um, what are what are my options? Well, this the uh, it's one of the things that we really wanted to try to make sure that we had the options. Uh, eh, hold on. Uh, available for so there we go open the door um, the position behind the wall I won't talk and drive that's hard, <laughs> that's hard. so um, <clears throat> so yeah so that breaks down into two base systems for us um, there's kind of like first impressions uh, what we call the perception system so when an NPC sees a player character uh, they judge the player character based upon um, what they're wearing um, and what the condition of their weapons are um, as a, in accordance with what the environment weapon status is, right? So if, like, if you're in, like, a library and you're walking in with a bunch of guns all over the place, they tend to go, that doesn't look right. Hmm. Um, What's uh, up with that guy? Yeah, so, and then credentials. Um, so Id identification badges or other things that you've managed to, uh, to account, you know, pick up over the course of your adventure. So that's what first impression is based upon. Uh, and that's how they'll, they'll come to their initial conclusion of, you know, enemy friendly or neutral. Uh, if they're enemy, they uh, and they're on Overwatch, they just fire, right? If they're an enemy and uh, and they're not on Overwatch, right? Then they'll they'll move to combat on their phase, right? Um, if um, it's a uh, if they're they're neutral, 
the game master can then use that as a tag to and have them in, um, interrogate. Um, and say, oh, stop, who are you, what are you, what are you doing here? Um, at that point, once you get into conversation, uh, the uh, etiquette skills, um, which are basically, you know, different types of etiquette, corporate, um, you know, uh, 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 again, the issue of live and being old and memories, but, <laughs> uh, but corporate and, and gang and Shadowrun and um, uh, social, you know, kind of like a um, socialite, those are those are etiquette types that um, the player uh, can utilize. Uh, oh, you throw in a barrier, right? I was thinking about it. What do you think? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Am I missing um, some? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, there's one more. Yeah, one, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, hello. <laughs> there we go. So there's something. Um, I just want to stop this guy from coming in if I could. Right, so this uh, shaman, a shaman has, a, has an ability to do is, is to cast these uh, the magical barriers. Um, and he also has the ability to shotgun that guy. <laughs> Sorry. So anyway, so yeah, so when you get into the conversation, then uh, the the charisma and the etiquettes come into play, um, which can then be used to persuade him that you're that you're friendly, um, and and friendly, of course, he just waves you through. So uh, we we wanted to make sure that there was a solid. What we what, in Shadowrun, the paper game, it's called the face, right? It's 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 the way to the, the ability to bluff yourself through those kind of circumstances. We want to make sure that we had you know pretty decent support for that. And we also, the, the, the basic stealth system is that the characters, the, in, the NPCs, all do have um, uh, vision cones, right? So you can sneak up behind them uh, if, you're, if you're quiet. Uh, but like shooting guns off makes a lot of noise and they'll actually hear that from adjacent rooms. Uh, and when, if they do, they'll investigate. So uh, there is you know, a, a sound Damn and it. vision that can be used uh, for physical stealth in addition to the kind of uh, <laughs> he went around. Yeah, he went around my thing because I'm a moron. Uh, all right, sorry. But it's okay because uh, now you're a moron on Twitch TV. Yeah, good times. Here, it's got the my... best place to be a moron I've discovered. <laughs> they, they'll be they'll be happy to point out exactly how much of a moron you are. Too. But, uh, nice high, nice hand grenade. That was, Thank that was you nice. very much. Uh, go for James and uh, I mean uh, use use a fireball from uh, from Jake. Oh, Jake, yeah, let's fireball. I like that plan. By the way, Floppy Donkey's apparently been playing a lot of XCOM because his uh -huh. his question is, are there going to be any destructible environments or considerations like that? No, those XCOM ga guys did great work with that, and I uh, I envy them their money. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, yes. Did that I is... choke you with that? <laughs> no, just so good if you're Jake Solomon friends. and you're watching and you have any money. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so that would be harebrain-schemes.com slash twitch. Yes. Fire or air? Fire Ask or me. air? What do they want? Yeah. Fire or air? Twitch fire. people? One, One fire. Us. Two, better or worse. It's a spirit. He's, he's going to summon a spirit. We'll a like, or B? We'll fire. fire. Fire! Two fires, an air and a fire. All right. And then fire, 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 fire. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Obviously no last airbender fans <laughs> in this audience. All right, let's talk about okay, this. Okay, that worked out well. Right. right. So um, uh, so Mitch has, has used the shaman to, to summon a fire a fire spirit. When uh, when you summon spirits, they, uh, they don't like being brought into the physical plane, and so you have to uh, balance your control of them. So you can see there's an escape chance down here of 3%. Because um, this is a relatively low po low power spirit, um, the more AP, the more actions you ask it to do, the higher that gets. But this this percentage keeps going up over every turn you use them. So next turn you'll start at, at five and go up from there. Uh, so go for it. And All right, he got he got him, three AP. Gives That's him good. Three AP, and now he can use them uh, like any other character. Now, one of the things we didn't do in the video, which you should do here, is right. uh, that the 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 spirits have spells like mages, uh, which they can use. Should I light this guy? <laughs> He's well, already how lit. How is that even a question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He doesn't look so good right yeah. now. Yeah, no, right. no, he's, he's, just, he's, he's right in the edge. Attack. There we go. All right. All right, feels much better now. Man, Bullcoth, he just wants to know everything about the Decker there is to know. Yes. I don't know what you want to say and what you. Feel I like know you exactly say. what we want to say. There you go. We're not telling you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's no. There's no ha ha. Here's the. Here, <laughs> it, well, all right, there was, but now there isn't. Now, watch my sincerity. Watch my face. Here's the thing. We have designed the uh, the decking gameplay on paper 
three times, I think. We implemented it once. We hated it once. Uh, we went back to paper three times. Am I accurate there? I think yeah. that. Well, what happened was, when I say three times, it's not so much that we went back to paper three times. It's a couple of different members of the team took stabs at it, right? It's like, hmm, you know what? We're just not satisfied. And so the reason why we're not telling you about the Decker, honestly, is because we're just not happy with it yet. And I know it's late, and we don't care. We're going to ship something <laughs> as cool as we possibly can. Yeah, no, we went, we went back to the, uh, back, back to paper one more time. And uh, to, we, we know, I mean, let's start with the basics. Um, you know. And for those who don't know really fast, decking is you jack your brain into the matrix, you're going into the internet.com, and you're traveling around, you're sending your consciousness out there. We'll use full auto and just... Please do. Yeah. Okay. Huzzah. I'm sorry, I just had to do that. Uh, no, no, no. Anyway, right. yeah, so... Is, is there a chance you just ax this completely if you don't, if you don't get something you're happy with? <laughs> we, I, I, I right. have no, the questions thing. that came No, 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 it's, no, 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 it's so, totally cool. So we got this is Apollo 13, with. right? Failure is not an option. Yeah, exactly. Um, but decking uh, in the Matrix world, right? It's, it's. I mean, we actually had the term Matrix long before the movie had the term Matrix, yeah, and it fun. was, and that kind of 3D visualization of, of what that space was like is something that we did many, many years ago. Uh, it's something we're not going to be able to do here. Uh, just yeah. it's it, in in its purest form. It's a whole different game. Uh, mm -hmm. And we just, you know, we just don't have the budget for that. So we've been looking for what's the right level of abstraction. And as Mitch said, um, we've tried a couple different levels of abstraction that just haven't had enough oomph to them for us. Um, so we uh, we're, we have the, I think we, we're confident to say we have the beginnings of an idea that, we're, that we think is going to play out well, um, but we're certainly not ready to talk about it yet. The, uh, the Luby just says, no Deckers, just monofilament kitten. <laughs> monofilament kitten. By the way, that's so. my new band name. <laughs> Please, people back at Hairbrain, would you write that down? We've got a whole Google Doc of band names. Go, go over to the, make sure you go to the, to the, yeah, to the desk there and read the computer. To computers. the hoo-ha with the thingy? Yeah. All read, right. Read that computer there, will you? Uh, yes. I, if I so, had my glasses um, on, I would. So one of the things, uh, you noticed there was an uh, Interact um, uh, kind of floating icon, icon? there. Yeah. Icon, that's the word. Yeah. Um, and uh, you can set any object in the world to be um, uh, interact interactable. Can't be destructible, unfortunately, <laughs> with our system, but it can be interactable. Uh, and so uh, this computer then allows us to, you know, get into um, the files of the computer. And low-level matrix stuff can be done through that mechanism just using the conversation engine. Um, Right now, he's looking through the files about the research that's been taking place here, uh, and it's you know about some kind of centuries. Mitch is reading; you can tell because his glasses. <laughs> and his lips um, are moving. <laughs> so um, they're they're working on some kind of magically enhanced centuries. Uh, looks like they have five tough subjects. Uh, we know that there's some kind of paranormal creature uh, from uh, from reading it all. Uh oh, some of them have uncanny intelligence, and no problem solving logic puzzles, <laughs> like like your schedule. Like how the hell do we wow. get this thing? Maybe I could hire them as a producer. <laughs> yeah, you could probably use one. <laughs> All right, look, I just want to download the failsafe because that would probably make with a stabby stabby or something. So yeah. I'm going to do that. All right. And then walk away. Walk away. Walk away. All right, so. Um, We've got, we've uh, cleared out the rooms. So we're going to advance into the next room here. Yep. <laughs> walk it right on through your shield. Oh, you know what? Just walk on. Just maybe walk not on. a good it's idea. Good. It's all good. It's no. all good. So friendly fire works. <laughs> with that. Uh, all right. And come on. I actually, with our young lady here, um, I need to yeah. look at the other screen. That's my problem. I'm looking at the wrong screen. Oh. So, um, I'm going to use a health pack on her because. Uh, yeah, she, uh, she got wounded there. Yeah, she did. And I'll try to Actually, avoid walking her through the fire to <laughs> avoid that. Gosh, so many, so many questions. I don't even know where to, where to even begin. Um, Start with the hardest hitting one. The hardest hitting one. I don't know. I was kidding. Give us a softball. A softball. <laughs> okay. Here's a, well. Here's a softball. We've seen. So we've seen. From Moondog TK, like we've seen basilisks and ghouls and hellhounds and Wendigo, or maybe juggernauts, but uh, what other awakened creatures can we expect to see? Whoa, well, we're not like, telling. Give the whole list right now. No. No surprises. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing no. left. But, no, I can answer every question, but sometimes it'll be, oh, sorry, screw it, no. Uh, um, no go ahead, if you want to screw it, you can, but uh, well, I just want to point out really fast, ladies and gentlemen, RC! 
This is uh, the world's greatest uh, uh, forums manager. Uh, thank yeah. you very much. And thank you for the money. We Any, a backer and, and a volunteer. Yeah, back, I mean, we, Kickstarter backers are actually but, in the game, and we sprinkle them throughout. Yeah. How about uh, enterprising games journalists? Uh, yeah, sure. For, Could what be. is it, $1,000? No problem. <laughs> Just <laughs> give me more hair. James. I'll be happy. Oh, yeah, we have people uh, any, for anyway, that. Anyway. Look, we could put you in a hoodie, too. Yeah. Which would be oh, that, pretty that's, awesome. Yeah. That's kind of awesome. Can I have red eyes? Can I look super hoodie. creepy? I already look super yes, creepy. Yes, we yeah. can make you look super creepier. No problem. But uh, yeah. but back to the back to the magical creatures. Oh, yeah. I can be a magical creature. Yes, you, you could. <laughs> okay, never. No, 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 not One actually. One thousand that. U.S. dollars. The minute I'm in a game, I I failed in my in the separation of church and state. But anyway, <laughs> okay. by all means, go on. Um, <laughs> magical well, no, creatures. Actually, yeah, no, I'm. Ha yeah, I mean, back to magical creatures. There, I guess the the phrase would be there's no there's nowhere near as many of them as we would like to have. That's right. Um, Good start. Uh, it's just a budget constraint. Um, yeah. And uh, and also, frankly, part of where our story it's both budget and where our story concentrates on. We started um, with the story, and then said, okay, which magical creatures do we want that you know fulfills the story rather than looking at a laundry list of of creatures and how do we shoehorn them into the story. Yeah, so we only, so there really is only a handful of them in in the beginning. Our hope is uh, is that uh, people like the game and they buy it, and then we can continue to add more as we uh, in in DLC packs afterwards. Right. So after we ship, for example, we're going to go to work on our Berlin campaign, and that's not just a Berlin campaign. That's like a Berlin Berlin campaign set. So you'll be able to then make your own missions in Berlin. Uh, we want to put out uh, more outfits for your characters so that you can dress yourself. Uh, any way you want. More uh, character portraits will be uh, shipping after the game, and then, you know, who knows what's going to happen after that. So, um, uh, just a couple notes there. You'll notice the drone was hanging back here because it was set to, to hold, and uh, um, I'm now setting him to uh, follow, so hopefully he will do that. Of course, it's Alpha, so who knows? Well, he's also stuck in there, so you might want to oh, right. tell him to go oh, through the on. air duct. I better do that. Yeah. Okay, so we'll turn him on. We'll there bring, you go. bring him through the air duct. Um, there. Okay. And besides, he's got a gun. <laughs> we want more guns. We'll move him over, because now I'm driving him. Yeah. Uh, so in this room, right, we had RC, a mage, and one guy, and we can see... Um, uh, something a beastie there, there right? yeah. known as a basilisk. Actually, he told us it was a basilisk. Yeah. So um, now, as I click on Jake, uh, one of the things you'll see is that Jake sees ley lines, right? And ley lines are are spots in the world which have greater concentrations of magical power, uh, and thus a low uh, reduce the costs of throwing magic. And um, uh, spell casting has three kind of components to it, right? The, there's a um, a, uh, a cooldown, so you know, how many turns it takes before you can throw that spell again. Uh, and then, of course, it's got to hit and it's got damage. Uh, and ley lines help you with all the above. Uh, now, in the video, <laughs> which was driving, he got Scooter stuck on here. Uh, and so Jake wasn't able to take advantage of it. Um, but this time, we'll get Jake on it, and he will take advantage of it. Uh, so he's only got one AP left. Um, uh, so we'll just do a mana, mana bolt. Not his big spell. And he misses. Okay. Whiff. Well, all right. That really Whiff. wasn't impressive, Jake. I mean, I just did that whole wind setup up for you. Yeah. About, lines really about ley out. lines. Yeah. And then you go and completely fuck it up. Well, it's. it's um, all right. So uh, it is the, the shaman here can see the spawn point, point. Um, and so this is a this is a game master supplied spawn point, uh, as opposed to like the med magical fetishes that he was able to use to bring the fire, uh, the fire guy in. Um, so we'll, we'll do that because it's conveniently located right behind. <laughs> see, there's gore. <laughs> blah, that was gouts gore. of blood. Yeah. Steve Renders. Now you can see this is a much higher power um, spirit because it's already got a 16 chance, 16 percent chance of breaking away. Yeah. And you, when when a spirit breaks away, it becomes a free agent. Um, it can banish itself right away. It's like, uh, nope, I'm out. Which is what you hope it does. Because if it doesn't do that, um, it it just starts going around attacking people and often willy like, nilly. I think the often the people is. like yeah. you, your team. It's a great word. Willy nilly. Yeah. I'm gonna Pills, leave yeah. it with one That's AP the name of my band. and yeah. um, and have him go Rawr. for it. And he missed. You know, I've always had this performance anxiety. It's, <laughs> a, it's, a, it's something about me. It's cool, man. You got three know. kids. Apparently, it worked out at least. I don't three know times. what it is. Um, <laughs> we're gonna. Did I do that wrong? <laughs> now you gonna bring that guy in too? I'm gonna try to bring him up. We'll see if what happens here. Okay. Did it, I mean, yeah. chain control. That's good. Yeah. Uh, 
So question while you do this. Uh, yes, cause, please. Cause the mo uh, no, I shouldn't say the modding, because that's not really quite right. But uh, like the player-created content. Yeah. Like big big thing that you're doing. And uh, yeah. you know, people have questions about like what they can do and what they can't do in that. So like cra Car Crazy 202s, like, you know, can modders make, uh, and again, not really modding isn't quite the word, but make new models for their campaign, for example. Like how nitty-gritty can people get? If they really want to start creating, how much can they really stick in it? Okay, see, I'm not the only one who's missing. I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, okay. everybody's... It's a, the, bad, day it's a bad day for everybody. Wait a minute, here's <laughs> another one. I and miss, and miss oh again. Oh, my lord. Right. So, RC, swing and a miss! <laughs> any, any... Oh, but not with a hand grenade. Real I, fast. I'm going to answer that question, but true. real fast. He took drain damage, and the way that... Were, oh. <laughs> okay. Nobody likes anybody. Uh, <laughs> so, a couple things, real fast. Sure. We have cooldown on our... On our uh, on our spells, and if you want to push yourself and say, "Look, I don't want to wait for the cooldown," you can, but you're going to take damage doing that. And that's that's that drain damage. And also, you can see that uh, you can also stun a character in the game too, so that they uh, they lose AP. Right, which is what. So the Baskos, yeah. So that's a different animal. But they, yeah, Baskos came in um, uh, and attacked our. Our uh, ab abomination. abomination spirit. Thank you. Um, and it used its paralyzing um, gaze. Gaze. Yeah. Right here, man. <laughs> Thank you. Right here. I appreciate it. sleep. I'm gonna get sleep after we ship. <laughs> yeah, it's um, gonna be great. And uh, and so now that guy's he's, he's stunned. He's out. You can see like here the uh, up here you can see the big red hand of you will do nothing. Um, now modding. Modding. So um, in the current state of the game, uh, we don't have the ability. Uh, for players to bring original art into the game. But all of these environments, the external and the internal environments, are all built out of relatively discrete Lego-like pieces that allow you to assemble an enormous diversity of environments. Um, and there are many different tile sets available that we've created. Uh, so uh, there, there isn't any kind of limitation to the kinds of things you can create from a structural standpoint. Um, there is some limitation in terms of thematically what they'll look like because you got to work with the with the Lego box we've got. In the future, again, it's one of those things we'd like to uh, to look at for the PC side uh, is potentially opening that up um, to uh, to allow user generated art into the into the game as well. And that includes at, characters too. Yeah, not on the first release. Right. So also when we release one of our campaign packs, we'll probably put a couple of new NPCs in there too. Sure. Uh, and pre-order, you know, gotta say, people, if you want to pre-order, save five bucks by going to harebrained-schemes.com slash Twitch. I love this guy. Okay, so uh, we'll use the fireball, and... Uh, I'm ready for this This seems like work. a good place well, for it. Well... What do you think? There. Look, go, you know, go for the I clearly of... can't tell you what to do. Or we go for the mage. We'll geek the mage! All right. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, reasonable. Um, now you'll notice uh, the, at this point he's a hothead. Um, uh, flames are uh, the, those flames are indicating that that the fireball not only does instant damage but also does damage over time. Mm -hmm. um, so he'll he'll stay burning for a while and that will do damage every turn. And um, the abomination has something like that too. He's got the uh, disease spell, which I think does damage over time plus its area of effect. So that's yummy too. Which uh, I'll use as soon as he wakes up. Um, uh. So I'm going to bring the, uh, uh, the shaman up. Yeah, you want to stand bit. him right in the middle of everything. Yeah, just, you know, because that would be exciting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll, uh, 2 AP enough? Uh, well, I don't want, don't want to push it. I also don't want him too close to me. <laughs> when he goes 8. Yeah. Shit. Okay. Now I guess I should ask you a question, but I got okay. involved in seeing what was actually happening. Yeah, yeah, I do. We're doing <laughs> that, too. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna give two AB to the abomination because he uh, he's still stunned, so he'll have it for later. <laughs> Bummer. Okay, uh, we're gonna drive our drone. Now I think I know the answer to this already, but right, uh, this it. is I'm coming up a lot. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so I figure we should probably talk about it, which is like Gunny Hath. Um, tons of other people want to know about uh, ways to play that aren't just on your own. Ways to play that aren't. If you just... want to get a buddy in on the on the. Oh, oh, how can you play the single player game with more than one player? You could, I suppose you could just uh, time it. If I play 10 minutes and then you play 10 minutes. We could hot seat the game. I love could, that idea. You could hot seat. 
So, uh, but there's no there's no co-op and no uh, not in oh this. we've been talking about co-op we loves the co-op yeah no this version doesn't this first version that we're shipping the summer does not have co-op it is a single player game so the the only kind of social interaction is the connection between creator and consumer right that you can create stories and send them to your friends for them to play um, we would love to do a co-op, um, but that we're going to have to figure out either a, you know, have people buy enough of these that we can afford yeah. to go and do it. That would be great. That would be the right way to go. Um, Somebody should start a Kickstarter and just send us the money, because running a Kickstarter is really hard. But uh, yeah, we would love to do co-op in the future. We'd also love to do co-op in the future. That's also uh, game mastered live. There's uh, there's RC. We just took, yeah. uh, Lady Z just took RC out. No. Wait, is he meet RC? Wait, is he um, meet RC? And of course, there's a, there's a Shadowrun Online coming at some point, but that's not yeah. your project. That's no, that's, uh, that's some great guys uh, called Cliffhanger Productions. They're in, uh, in uh, Germany. And uh, yeah, they're, they're basing it on uh, another game they did called Jagged Alliance. And, uh, it's, uh, not that anybody's heard of that or anything. Yeah, yeah Jagged That's, Alliance is a, is a classic. Yeah. Well, maybe they, maybe they, not the most recent Jagged no, this Alliance. This is Jagged Alliance online. Well, yeah, they did Jagged yeah. Alliance online, not, right. not, not the original PC game. Um, but yeah, and what our co-op, would, it, it's a different animal if we, if yeah. we get eventually around to it, because it is it is um, uh, still session-based, if you will. So, uh, so what we did there, uh, just as a quick example, um, hold on, uh, is um, we came over, we used the terminal, um, the failsafe. With the failsafe codes that we picked up before, uh, and that fired off, closed the door, fired off the gas, killed all the basilisk in the room before we had to go fight them. Uh, just as an example, this is, again, everything done with the same uh, uh, editor. Uh, and so all of that are all, you know, whether the special effects, the guys dying, the interactable object, all of that is just done uh, in the editor with, uh, with triggers. So, uh, and no, no scripting necessary. Uh, now logic is necessary. Logic, yeah. Now we have a basilisk who is uh, he's uh, moderately wounded and ran away from us. There's a but threat that in the room. That won't stop us from killing him. So mm. uh, let's see. Count Markula, boy, he's he's wanted this question asked for so long. All right, let's go. Moment. Yeah, Count um, Markula, this is for you, baby. So if you're in the editor, <laughs> if you're in the editor and you want to hide interactive items, can you do that so that they're not immediately obvious? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's There's an easy good, one. You get question. that. You give us another. Because that one was a softball. Oh, wait a minute. Well, th this the social system is is oh. coming up a lot, like the in-game social system too. People wondering, like, is like, is is that really the way to go? You know, like, if 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 uh, you want to be super effective. Uh, that's, oh. that's... Well, again, I, I think uh, it, it's it's all about um, the the runs that you're on, right? Uh, the game master is effectively empowered to. I missed. <laughs> I feel like I missed. <laughs> we suck. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, well, you it's play, you talk. You're just not. You're the world's not worst die rolls. Calculating properly. Let's There's just push this. That. Sorry. Oh wow. All right now. This guy. All right. Disease. Oh yeah. wait a minute. No. Oh, I blew it. All right, fine. It's Scooter's turn. Yeah. All right. Here, I'm gonna walk right up to him. I don't want to miss. Um, anyway, back to back to the previous question. So the game master um, uh, can design a run. Uh, in multiple in multiple levels, right? By not levels physically, but levels from a play play standpoint, so that uh, it can support the the social face play. It can support the, the straight up gunning. It can support Matrix um, so proud or of yourself. <laughs> or whatever it might be. <laughs> um, but it is up to it is kind of up to the game master. Not and we'll tell you from personal experience, right? It when you design a a, a shadow run to be uh, defeatable by all those different techniques, it is like designing that that run five times. Yeah. Right. Because you've got to be able to, to have decent gameplay for every possible approach, uh, and that's really hard and time consuming to do. So mm -hmm. in in our campaign, not every approach works on every chapter, right, sure. or, or or every scene. But that's know? not just an element of time. I mean, the story doesn't call for that. Yeah, also, exactly. Um, so I mean, I think, it, but it is a game master. Uh, it is totally in the game master's control to um, how effective and where uh, where it would be effective. Yeah, every single way. tool that we use, we're giving to game masters, right, to make the game. Sure. So if you want to go a face, if you want to build a face only run, you could. Oh yeah. Do that. Oh I'm, yeah. Totally. Tell them about your closed room mystery thing. Oh yeah. No, one of the things that, that to me that um, I wanted to make sure the end that the the engine would support is that you could do in a, you know kind of your classic um, uh, Perot 
you know, Hercule Poirot. Hercule Poirot. Yeah, uh, good Agatha mystery. Christie reference. Yeah. great. Oh yeah, you well, know, old guys, the, we read. You know. So. <laughs> but yeah, you could do the whole thing where, where you know, <laughs> just it's all on. It's all in a handful of rooms, uh, and it's all done through conversation and objects and 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 clues. Uh, and, you know, no one draws a gun in the entire time. I yeah. mean, the engine will totally support that, uh, which is, to me, one of the things I'm, I'm really excited about because I, I think we're going to see uh, a huge diversity of, of, of content come from uh, from this and set with and all that appropriately set to the Shadowrun world. I mean, Shadowrun has always had kind of a very deep noir roots, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, not only supports uh, the kind of, uh, you know, balls-out gameplay we've been seeing here, but also the much more subtle... Um, you know, uh, character-based gameplay, and I think it's it's great to be able to to uh, have that spectrum, and we're a thousand percent confident that um, the the collective creativity of of the Shadowrun players and game masters will um, will blow us away. Yeah, without a doubt, it so just people, has to. Yeah. yeah, and people want to know. I mean, gosh, like we could do this all day, right? I mean, this is the kind of thing we're we're closing out in an hour, so I say let's go for a little bit longer. Um, if, if Dan's good with that. It's, uh, you good with good that, Dan? So we'll go good. for a little bit longer. Right, we have than, a plane to catch because yeah, so we have to actually make the game. Have, yeah, okay, but that's, let's that's go. true. No. All right, so you, you tell me when it's time to stop because right. uh, we're going on uh, we're going on noon. But um, like a lot of people like asking, and this, this surprised me, like social type features, like real world social type features. Like let's say I want to share, you know, my, uh, my run or uh -huh. easily stream to Twitch TV or if I want to upload something to YouTube. Um, stuff like that. Like, what, what, what do, you, what do you got in store? Like, and how easy is it going to be for me to access other people's creations? So, um, uh, one of the things that we we wanted to do is make sure that 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 part was really easy. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and so we're trying to we're right now going through that in terms of how we're going to actually achieve it. But our, we're confident that we'll be able to achieve the goal where there'll be, if you will, for lack of a better phrase, a open marketplace where you can post your post your content, download content. And, and just play it right off the bat. You don't have to go through all sorts of crazy, um, you know, kind of modder type uh, stuff. Like to copy this file into this directory. Folder and all yada, kind of yada, stuff yada, that, yada. that is much more uh, consumable than that. Frictionless um, yeah. is a good word. And then one of the things that, that we're still trying to figure out the mechanism for, but we're really that, that we we're dedicated to try to figure out how to happen is the how to, you know, kind of take the what's rising to the top of uh, of the user generated content and and actually move it into the into the menu system of the game itself yeah we'd like um, that that yeah, would be that's, great yeah that's something we would really love to try to achieve um, so again you know there uh, to because we feel that the UGC is so important we want to make sure that that we've gotten as much friction out of its consumption its creation and its consumption as possible now what we haven't done is we haven't uh, developed any features to like record uh, a run and post it to YouTube, we're putting um, all of the funding for this game right into the game, right? And that's yeah. very important. And, you know, into this gameplay and creating the world of Shadowrun. So that's an ad advanced feature that sounds great. Uh, it may be in the future, but that's not where yeah, we're putting our effort. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, recently somebody, uh, there was an article posted online talking about, uh, not misquoting Jordan, but uh, although that's easy to do, uh, but more, <laughs> did I say that wrong? The, uh, but saying, you know, we're out of money. And uh, no, we're not out of money. We've got all the money we need to uh, finish the game. Um, but we are going to, uh, you know, we project we're going to run through every single dollar that was given to us. And bless you for that. And we're going to throw some of our Strike Fleet Omega money in yeah, there, some too. Of the, some of the money that we've, that, right. I mean, because we, we're dedicated to make this thing the best we can. You're independently um, rich. Yeah. <laughs> at, one, at one point, yes. Um, I remember uh, watching that rise and fall. It was awesome. Yes, as my wife <laughs> From said, my perspective. if I'd only retired 10 years ago, I would have been very wealthy. Yes. Um, but no, I, I mean, we're here because we love making these things. That's exactly and, right. Um, and so, yeah, we're putting every penny on the screen, uh, and, uh, and and uh, there's no... There's no scenario in which this game doesn't uh, this game doesn't come out with with our absolute best efforts put into it. But if you do want to give us a couple of bucks, go to hairbrainschemes.com <laughs> slash twitch and look at the $75 collector's edition. It's rad. All right, all right. That was a pig So move. is this I'm a bad sorry. time to Is there a tote bag? Yeah. Come on. Really? No, but instead you get those dog tags. You get the, the Shadowrun yeah. USB okay. dog tags yeah. suitable for wearing. And there's other stuff too, like the collector's edition also has. Oh, you get bonus goodwill, which yes. is, which is yes. packaged and sent. Yes, oh, allow us right. to show you what that looks like now. Can you look in the camera? 
We love you. Yes. Uh, I guess it's a bad time too to, to say that our next announcement was actually going to be like a user contest to see who can make up the the best headlines attributable to Jordan. <laughs> so <laughs> apparently, I'm making sorry, up headlines that's, attributable that's to Jordan is easy. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's it's uh, yes. gotten the kibosh. There's been there's been many of those over the years. Yeah, whatever. And and I you know many of them I actually said, but I'll deny yeah. that afterwards. Um, no, actually, one of the things that we are looking forward to is uh, is indeed you know doing things like. Uh, um, you know, Shadowrun hackathons where, where we people are making content and, and we're able to come in and, and you know, like throw help them out. Yeah, throw pizzas down and, and get, yeah. uh, get sessions together. And we're, get our we're, designers in there to help them figure yeah. out their logic. So that's the kind of stuff, stuff like that, that we're looking forward yeah. to. That's the kind of contest we want to do is you to know, see it, your creativity come forward. The internet is great, you know, for playing games, social games, you know, uh, playing Halo 4 and killing people and yelling at them and stuff. But it's really great to get together with gamers. You know, we were just at South by Southwest last week. And, it, you know, talking to gamers one-on-one, -on -one, you know, we went to Gen Con last year and that kind of thing. That's really where it's at, because that's where we started. We're tabletop gamers. So it's all about social for us. This is just our first foray into it. But we love talking yeah. to people about games. Yeah, and that's why moving towards cooperative things like that are really really exciting to us yeah. and uh, and we hope that uh, you give us the opportunity to do so um, by uh, you know enjoying the game yeah will you guys be at PAX Prime showing the game no we're going to be working um, yeah no we working yeah, working when is working. that huh when is end that of this current? month no, no. Yeah, it's, oh, uh, oh, oh, that's right. Oh, Pax, wait, Pax, Pax Prime. East. Prime. Yeah, Pax, Pax East is Prime. Pax Prime. Prime. Yeah, no, that's no, in our yeah. hometown. Yeah, no, we'll be, oh, why didn't you say so? That's, that's All right, you did like, say so. Pax yeah. Prime, yeah, we, Pax will Prime. Definitely yeah, be at, we will be at Pax. You'll have to tear us away from Prime. Pax Prime. We, we, we wanted to go uh, to Boston? Pax East. Yeah, Pax East. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's heads down. Yeah, no, no, no. That's go ship, go ship, go ship. Yeah. So the Genesis version, like this is coming up a lot. Yeah. Um, too. People want to see like, are there characters from the Genesis version? Like, are you? Are there any like uh, shout outs to that particular? So version? there is. Um, yes, uh, definitely. There is. Uh, so we, you know, Jake. Jake came and uh, you know visit is visiting from the um, uh, SNES, and Harold Quinn is going to come and play with us from the uh, Sega Genesis version, uh, and we're very excited to have him, his Quixoric self, yeah. um, powerful Quixoric self, yeah, in the game. But how he appears and why? We're we, not saying. No. Yeah. Kitsune, everybody, like this, just, just play. Do you have anything more to play oh. on the screen? No, we won. We, well, yeah, the problem is we, oh, no, we shouldn't play one of the other scenarios though. No. That would, that would tease. No, things. no, we, no. We wanted no. to be able to run the editor and show and try to open things up and, and yeah, and then our around. plane got delayed and we weren't able to set things up. Yeah, so some we were having trouble installing the editor. It turns out there's fog and boss in uh, San Francisco in the mornings. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Our, our hope was to be able to do that. Uh, we are going to be doing some some videos in the upcoming weeks with the editor. Um, so you'll start to see kind of behind the scenes and and we did post screenshots and, and a write up of it a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but no, that's, we're not going to we're not going to. That's all you get. Play today. That's all you get. Oh. Yeah. oh. Scene. We'll just, we'll just scene. We'll, kind of, well, I guess that. I guess that, that sort of takes us close because you've got a plane to catch. We do. Um, we've, we've reached the end of, of, of what you can really show today. Sadly, the editor um, wouldn't get running. No. Um, which is that's well, yeah, one of the, one of the we walked we walked in like go 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 get on screen. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, we only got here about ten minutes before uh, before the cameras started rolling. So yeah, I mean, this is what happens. You you bring a plane to come see us, and mm -hmm. then we throw you out of the building <laughs> and make you walk back to the airport yeah. to go. Risk home. is our business. Risk is why we're out here. But it's a good time to mention before we say, you know, goodbye. Um, not, not for all. Well, adieu. Adieu. Or, or yeah, we would love to come adieu. back and, right? and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and show you more. And, yeah, you know, come back. Weeks. I want you to come on the podcast. And if I say that on the camera, uh -huh. then that means that maybe you'll actually do that. I, that if you okay. answer if you positively, Skype, that's Skype, what it means. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. If I could, if yeah, 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 if we could Skype, Skype in, in, yeah, that'd be, I would be glad yeah. to. Jordan would be happy to. Yeah. <laughs> You, you, you'd be miserable if we came on, though. <laughs> I've had my share of podcasts. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, it's so people should go to hairbrained-schemes.com/slash Twitch if they want to pre-order because they get five bucks off yep. mm -hmm. if they do that. So it's fifteen dollars normal for mm -hmm. the basic and thirty dollars. No, it's fifteen dollars no, no, now. Discounted now if 20, you pre-order. Twenty basic, later. Twenty for the deluxe and seventy-five. Yeah. For the collector's edition, right. unless you're outside of the U.S., there's like ten dollars shipping and handling for yes. that collector's edition. That's right. If you do that, so I th did I get all that? You that was well done. I hope I Thank got you. all that. This that is all on the internet. We yeah, really appreciate good. that. And like, if you get the deluxe and collectors, you get um, the soundtrack and you get the Shadowrun Returns anthology, the PDF. 
yep. of mm -hmm. the anthology. And That's if you right. get collectors, in addition to that, you get um, the, the Berlin DLC, which is mm -hmm. the second campaign setting. You right. get the, the USB dog tags. And you get these cool. fine yeah. gentlemen saying, I love you. We do. Which is, we will. Which Actually, is fantastic. We'll, think, we'll, we'll say that for any level. But, your, yeah. but there's even love more. Even yeah. more for some price. Without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. That's right. The, the well, dog tags are a little costly, but your love is <laughs> even more valuable. <laughs> Well, actually, I mean, I think it's it's the it's the fans' love that puts us here to begin with, and uh, it's their generosity that's given us the opportunity to make the game. Uh, we have a lot more to do, and and uh, and we're going to go back to uh, Seattle and get you know put our heads back down and finish it, um, which we're just so excited about. Um, and uh, the reception over the last couple of days um, yeah. uh, from the video, we so if you haven't just, seen uh, the video, we we just clunked our way through this because we were sort of distracted and stuff but if you look at our video it's already gotten like 250,000 views on YouTube which rocks pretty hard well, we appreciate all this continued yeah. support and thank you and uh, shout out to the team back there Hairbrain. Hey. we love you yeah now get back to work yeah don't <laughs> don't look at us anymore yeah and work. thanks to the GameSpot viewers obviously yeah and, and, and for me thanks. too oh. like, I, I thank you for joining thank in. you all guys and so I much. guess uh, Jordan and Mitch come back soon and uh, everybody should tune in for more episodes of Now Playing. We've got lots of stuff coming up. So uh, I guess we'll see you very soon. All yeah, right. yeah. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.